hello everyone welcome to my channel in this tutorial we are going to see the implementation part of k-means clustering algorithm for a given case study so in my last lecture you had seen the introductory part on k-means clustering algorithm and also you had seen how it works okay now let us try to implement the same using python so first of all we have to import the necessary libraries so those are matplotlib which will help us in visualizing the clusters also the pandas which will help us in uploading the data set to our data frame okay first let us do that i'm going to import the libraries here and after i import the libraries i need to import the data set through pandas library pd.read_csv of mall customers.csv file okay so let me import it once i import it let me show you in the variable explorer the data frame of this data set okay it is very clear that it has imported uh, the data successfully here and you can see there are five uh, different uh, uh, variables here like customer id gender age annual income and the uh, spending score okay now what is the main idea here is the mall uh, team would like to analyze the customer information and decide how many groups or clusters can be formed and they would like to know uh, whether uh, based on the spending score uh, which among the customers uh, will be uh, can be focused okay so that uh, they can uh, provide some good offers uh, so as to increase the spending score of them okay so that that is the main uh, idea here now based on that idea uh, i would like to consider only uh, two major variables which will help us uh, in uh, doing this task those are annual income and the uh, spending score here okay since i would like to visualize these clusters and that can be possible only if there are two dimensional uh, but as of now we have five uh, variables here out of which the very uh, important variables i'm going to consider those are annual income and spending score okay here spending score is not a dependent variable vector okay we don't have uh, predefined labels as we had it in a classification but right now i'm going to consider these two uh, variables as my features and i'll discard all these other three features like customer id gender and age okay together we have 200 instances now to do that job we can see that from the data set that the annual income and the spending score resides in the index position 3 and 4 you can see that 0 1 2 3 and 4 so we have to consider only these two columns from this data set to do that we have to uh, allocate the index position that means we are considering all the rows but we are considering only the third column and the fourth column okay and try to put it in a matrix of features x execute this line of code and now when you see that x variable you can see only two variables have been stored here okay so total 200 instances of data has been imported successfully now we will try to uh, use some uh, mechanism through which we can find an optimal number of clusters okay we don't try to uh, assume the number of clusters rather we will utilize some better mechanism which will help us in uh, identifying the optimal number of clusters the mechanism what we are going to apply here is the elbow method here okay elbow method okay that elbow method we are going to apply it to find the optimal number of clusters now it's time to build our uh, model so to do that we import a uh, uh, the k means uh, class from scikit-learn dot cluster module okay we will import it first and after that we will create a list okay which is called as uh, within cluster sum of squares okay we'll try to create a list and we'll try to fill it up with all the new centroid values which has been computed okay F what what i'm going to do means i will create a uh, uh, the range from 1 to 10 okay first of all i will give uh, 10 different iterations and later on 
uh, by looking at the uh, elbow method graph we can easily understand that how many optimal customers we have uh, uh, this thing clusters we have to select it okay to do that job i'm using this for loop from the range 1 to 11 so you can see this is the lower bound it is 1 upper bound should be 1 greater than the the value which you would like to select okay so 1 to 11 means it is going to discard this 11 and going to select only 10 right then i need to uh, create a uh, instance of this class by passing few parameters and you can see the number of clusters what i'm going to uh, take is i so it is clear that uh, for each iteration the i value will keep changing from 1 to 10 now uh, for the first iteration the clusters will be 0 okay and uh, we are going to uh, take init is equal to k means plus plus so here the second parameter is uh, if you'd like to avoid the random initialization trap okay if you'd like to avoid the random initialization trap and uh, the way uh, we can avoid this is to initialize the k means algorithm with a method called as k means plus plus here okay so it basically an advanced initialization uh, trick which will make sure that we don't fall into the random initialization trap okay that is this uh, init equal to k means plus plus after that we give the random state value to 42 or any other numbers which you would like to have it okay so this will be the first step and later we will fit the model okay we will fit the model to the matrix of features x and finally we would like to append okay all the uh, the computation of each clusters value into the list of wc ss within the clusters sum of squares and the way to get that uh, wcs ss value is to call an attribute okay we have to call an attribute of the k means object which is known as inertia okay this one okay this will help you in identifying the uh, new clusters and put it into the list here okay later on we can try to plot the graph based on the range here so this wcss will be the x-axis variable from uh, 1 to 10 and then we will uh, uh, title the graph as the elbow method and uh, the x-axis will label it as number of cluster, uh, customer, uh, clusters and the y label as the WCSS and we'll try to display the graph. Let us try to execute these lines of code and we can see it in the plots here. Okay, Just go to these plots and try to visualize the graph. So with that graph, one can easily try to identify how much uh, uh, number of clusters we can try to target. Okay, By looking at the graph here, it can be easily understood that uh, this is an elbow graph. It is very clear that uh, once it reaches the clusters 5, okay, the graph is getting slowing down. It is getting reduced. So based on this graph, we can decide that the optimal number of clusters what we can take for our case study is 5. Now, based on this uh, optimal clusters, we are going to train the k-means model on the given data set. Okay? So, uh, we need to uh, write this k-means and uh, the number of clusters is 5. So, based on this elbow method graph, we have decided that the optimal clusters what we can take for our data set is 5. That's the reason I wrote it 5 here and we will take the initialization uh, to avoid from this uh, random initialization trap we are using k means plus plus and again the random state value will be 42 here okay later on we will use this uh, y k means here okay we'll fit it to the model and finally try to predict the values here so this y k means will store all the different clusters to which it belong to the each customer so it is holding all the values let us see uh, each of these customers belong to which particular groups okay so among the five clusters now we have we should be able to analyze that first customer belong to whether it belong to cluster 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 okay the values will be given from 0 to 4 let us execute these lines of code and try to estimate here okay let me print the value here y underscore k means and you can see that here the first uh, customer okay belongs to the cluster okay cluster 1 because cluster 3 
okay because cluster 0 i uh, mean if you get the value 0 it means that cluster 1 uh, 1 is cluster 2 2 is cluster 3 okay 0 to 4 you can see the values here 0 to 4 you can see some values in 4 0 means the cluster 1 4 means the cluster 5 1 means it is a cluster 2 okay like that from 0 to 4 you will be able to see all the people now uh, looking at this uh, one cannot easily try to understand uh, uh, it properly so we try to visualize the clusters now here so what we do means we will use a scatter plot here from the matplotlib dot uh, plot as plot so use a scatter plot here and pass two parameters for x axis and y axis okay so what we do here is from the matrix of features x uh, we'll try to assign the index position okay now in the y underscore k means you had seen uh, these are all the index position okay 0 to 4 okay now let us try to uh, visualize it by writing y underscore k means equal to 0 0 0 0 means this is the cluster 0 so we are telling this is cluster 0 and in that this is the first attribute means for x axis similarly for the y axis from the cluster 0 take a uh, for the one variable for attribute for the y axis that is the one so here zero means x axis one means y axis for the cluster zero that means the first cluster okay and you can give the yes as hundred so yes is the size and we gonna choose hundred here uh, which will display some big enough points okay uh, we can see them and each of these points belong to different uh, customers here and the color what we are going to give it is a uh, red and we will also label that uh, cluster as cluster 1 okay for 0 whichever index position you got 0 we are labeling it as cluster 1 similarly we are going to repeat it 5 times here so this will be what uh, this will be the cluster 1 in the cluster 1 take the cluster 1 select for the x axis and y axis so this is a 0 is x axis 1 is y axis for the cluster 1 and uh, and give the color differently here okay you give the color as blue and label it as cluster 2 and similarly for this is the third cluster and for the third cluster you are given the uh, uh, color as green and uh, labeled as cluster 3 for the fourth cluster you are given the color as cyan okay and uh, labeled it as cluster 4 and for the last cluster you are labeling uh, it as cluster 5 with the color magenta okay this is how we are going to uh, uh, visualize the clusters now to visualize the centroid okay let us also visualize the centroid in the given observations okay to do that i need to take uh, this clusters underscore center uh, method here so what it does means cluster center attribute is actually uh, a 2d array okay in which the row is correspond to different centroids and the columns uh, correspond to their coordinates okay so we take the row and we take the coordinates that is for 0 and for 1 okay and uh, we will give the uh, bigger size than the observation for the observation we are given 100 for this we are going to give a bigger size that is 300 and we'll give the color as yellow and we we'll label it as a centroid so this is how we do finally we will give the title for the second graph as a cluster of uh, customers and uh, along with the x-axis uh, annual income in dollars okay and uh, y label as spending score so now uh, uh, it is easy for us to visualize the clusters okay now let us execute this line of code and try to understand it okay so it, you can see that in the graph it is very clear that we have five clusters correct so this is a first cluster second cluster third cluster fourth cluster and a fifth cluster cluster right also along with that we can also see the centroid here clearly okay based on this centroid it has considered these observations are part of this group okay so five groups has been made now what is the outcome of this graph it is very clear uh, for a, a team of malls to analyze their customer information like you can see that these are the groups who are having uh, the lower annual income but also the uh, the the spending time in the mall is also very less okay you can see the, uh, the maximum is 40 right and you can see this group this is cluster 4 group okay based on the legend we can uh, uh, easily identify it 
this is cluster 4 and uh, even though their uh, annual income is less uh, but their uh, the time spent in the mall is higher than all okay and uh, you can also see for this pink one okay magenta so here you can see the annual income is very high also their uh, spending time in the uh, in the mall are also high so it is very clear that the team of mall has to concentrate on such customers because they have higher income as well as their spending time in the mall is higher okay and they can give uh, various offers for the various categories here because same offers cannot be given for all these uh, groups here so based on the groups based on their uh, uh, annual income and based on their uh, spending score in the mall uh, one can easily uh, try to analyze and uh, give them better offers so that their spending time in the mall can be increased so this is how the k-means algorithm will help anybody uh, in uh, discovering the groups based on the given observations and also it will help in analyzing the customer behavior okay and based on this behavior one can easily try to uh, identify their uh, behavior and try to give more and more offers so that they can make more benefit out of this customers okay I hope you understood this if you have any doubts regarding to this k-means algorithm please drop your comments in the comment section okay so thank you for watching this video happy learning guys